Today in the Chairman's Corner, the opportunity to change the way Fulton County handles issues of crime and recidivism. Partners from the fields of law enforcement, the courts, government, and private citizens contribute to a report on changing the response to crime in our county. We'll take a look, plus we'll hear from a few stakeholders committed to making our community safer. The Chairman's Corner begins right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. For the past year I've been a part of a special project bringing together minds from all over our community looking for ways to improve Fulton County's response to crime, easing jail overcrowding and finding ways to make our courts run smoother. Derek Carver has more on efforts of the Smart Justice Advisory Council. It had been a year in the making for members of the Smart Justice Advisory Committee. Their mission, to identify and address the causes of high rates of incarceration and recidivism in Fulton County. After several committee meetings as well as community crime and safety summits, members presented the culmination of all of that hard work. This has been a great effort, collaborative effort by many stakeholders within Fulton County government and external to Fulton County. And so we've been working through identifying what the problems and challenges are in our community in terms of public safety and then coming up with a strategy and coming up with recommendations. The advisory committee is made up of top elected officials in the justice community as well as the heads of universities and civic representatives. After hearing from the public during crime and safety summits all over the county and after systematically discussing the issues committee members deal with every day, the group came up with the recommendations. Among those suggestions, create a mechanism for government and justice partners to better coordinate and communicate standard practices. Investigate securing bonds from the private sector to fund certain government and nonprofit services. Implement additional pre-arrest diversionary programs and pursue restorative programs for offenders to right their wrongs. Many of these individuals um, have not finished high school, um, don't have any marketable job skills, may have substance abuse problems, may not have a home. And so we uh, make an effort through our pretrial diversion team to put them in touch with those resources and individuals that can help them be more productive citizens. Because nearly 40 percent of the county's budget is allocated to the justice system, the committee hopes that some of their recommendations will help reduce the tremendous financial burden the revolving justice door is having on its taxpayers. We want to make sure our communities are safe. And so we are going to work hard. We're going to make sure that public safety is first and foremost in our our heads and our eyes and our ears in terms of action. And we're going to work collaboratively towards that goal. For the Chairman's Corner, I'm Daryl Carver. Thank you, Daryl. When we come back, we hear from District Attorney Paul Howard. Welcome back. Our guest is Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard. Welcome, my friend, to the show. Thanks for inviting me, John. So we're talking about the Smart Justice Advisory Committee. Thank you so much for being a part of this wonderful effort the past year or so. What attracted you to wanting to participate? Well, I think there are a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, in our criminal justice system, uh, for many years, so many of us have struggled uh, with uh, some troublesome aspects of our community, uh, and that is the large number of African-American male, males that are incarcerated in our Fulton County uh, jail system and in our state system. Uh, and so the question becomes, is there a better way? Are there some other solutions uh, that might on one hand keep our community safe, but at the same time provide these young people with an opportunity to improve their lives so that they won't come back to the criminal justice system and I saw this as an opportunity for all of us as a community to sit down and focus on that question. So I think you mentioned um, solutions. Yeah. So how can we be more efficient? I mean, you sit in the 
district attorney's area. So how can we be more efficient? Well, I think one of the things that, uh, that you talked about quite a bit, I think is something that is extremely important, and that is collaboration. I think that all of the agencies in our community and in our county, we need to sit down and talk. We need to communicate, you know, not just uh, around the holidays, but it needs to be done on a regular basis. Uh, and we need to do it around specific subjects. And, and I think that was one of the right. aspects of, of this council that I like, because I think that from those conversations, then you can begin to create some meaningful solutions. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned specifics. So is there any one or two things that you can elaborate on that you think we can do to make sure we're more efficient? Well, I think one of the things I'm really looking forward to is the Smart Justice Advisory Council. Um, and I'm hoping that um, we will get to the point that we can hire a professional staff and that this professional staff can gather data so that all of us can sit down and make smart decisions mm -hmm. about criminal justice issues and problems in our community. Uh, it is something that I've talked about for years, mm -hmm. uh, something that's available in other cities around the country, and I'm really looking forward to that kind of council being established in this community. One of the things that I've, I admire about what you do, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big burden, you're very busy, juggle a lot, so how can this make it easier for you and your, your dynamic team? Well, when uh, one of the things that uh, people sometimes don't realize that we spend a lot of time trying to make decisions about people's lives, which and those decisions are incarceration or some other alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, when there are other alternatives so that we don't have to just rely upon our prison system, it makes our job much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, when young people are being productive, not committing crimes, that means the job of the district attorney is a lot easier, and that's what we're looking forward to. Okay. Well, Mr. Howard, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your insights, and also thank you so much for your collaboration and your uh, input during this whole process. I'm very excited about uh, our continued engagement going forward with the Smart Justice Advisory Council. And, and I don't know whether or not uh, anyone has said this to you, but uh, my thanks go out to you. And I think the people in this county really ought to thank you as well for putting this together and making sure that we are continuing to talk about smart justice. So thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you as well. When we come back, we we'll hear from Mayor Clark Bodie, the mayor of Palmetto, and also Hattie Cotton Tukes. Uh, stay tuned with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've been focusing in on crime and recidivism. We're now joined by Captain Hattie Cotton Tukes with the Fulton County Police Department, as well as Mayor Clark Bodie, uh, mayor of one of our southernmost cities, uh, Palmetto. Uh, welcome to the show, both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Commissioner, Thank you. for allowing us to come on the show to discuss such a very important topic well, of smart justice. Well, thanks again for being here. So, uh, Captain Tukes, you are part of the committee along with uh, Chief Jones. Uh, what do you think can come out of this effort in terms of some of the recommendations, how we can administer justice in a more smart manner? I feel that we can um, come out with a, a better smart manner simply because smart justice is a way of addressing uh, the criminal justice issues. Mm -hmm. um, it, it also solved the problems of crimes. So I'm always looking for a better way of solving crimes mm -hmm. and most of all, making the community safe. Mm -hmm. And so specifically, is there anything, you know, especially for the citizens of South Fulton where you have primary jurisdiction, is there anything specifically that you think needs to be communicated to, to citizens about smart justice? Definitely so. A lot of them really don't understand smart justice. Mm -hmm. So I think from the meetings, it helped me mm -hmm. and enhanced my knowledge also of it. Mm -hmm. And from that, we can advise them that it empowers the community. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it also helps the victim and it address also um, uh, the community as well as it tells them what the police department is doing right. and what we are doing to make it smart justice. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So Mayor Bode, at our last meeting you talked very passionately about some issues and challenges you have in, in Palmetto. So it's not just a, a Atlanta issue or, um, or a Sandy Springs issue, it's an issue that applies to Palmetto. So from your law enforcement background, is there anything that you think can come out of this effort in terms of smart justice? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think one thing that we all need to realize is that uh, crime has no boundaries, uh, whether you're in the city of Atlanta or the city of Palmetto. As uh, long as individuals are able to get in the automobiles and go place, we're going to have crime. And uh, we've become a country uh, where a lot of times the only solution that uh, people have been able to come up with is we uh, lock people up. And uh, of course, there's a lot of people that are uh, probably incarcerated as we speak, it should not be. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got nonviolent crimes, you've got drug related crimes. Uh, and, and I think uh, the word smart, you know, being attached to just, justice is, is one thing that we really need to look at is, you know, uh, the diversion programs, you know, something that we can get these individuals in so we can try to rehabilitate them actually before they get into the uh, more serious aspect of it become violent and uh, that's that's one of the things my my citizens are, are extremely concerned about and uh, you know we've all got uh, children and grandchildren that are growing up and uh, of course uh, a lot of times they deserve a second chance mm -hmm. and uh, we're hoping that uh, you know we can come up with some some programs especially through our school system on on the, uh, the smart justice committee of course we had people from all aspects, not only government, but law enforcement, but the school system. And, uh, you know, working with the school system and working with the parents, uh, you know, be, be able to slow this down a little bit right. on our end. You know, in fact, on that note, uh, for me, with my educational background, I'm very, very sensitive and concerned about the, the school to prison pipeline that exists. And too many of our young people are dropping out of school, high school specifically, and resulting into criminal activity and then going into our jail and so there's sort of this revolving door and so mm -hmm. Captain Tooks, any, any thoughts from your perspective? I know it may be frustrating for you as a law enforcement person to get out there, respond to problems in the community, arrest and then they end up in jail and then they get out and then they go back. Any thoughts in terms of how recidivism and the revolving door complex can be addressed? Well, as you know, a lot of crimes they are repeat offenders. Right. And I think through the Smart Justice Program that um, we, in, in reference to crime, you find out why. Mm -hmm. And I think through the Smart Justice you have, it will address mental health. Right. It will address the employment. It will address education. It will it address the addiction. Mm -hmm. So through through all those programs and help for our repeaters, I think that will help with the frustration of the police department. Right. But um, we try to address our communities with neighborhood watch programs. Mm -hmm. And we have one of the best program under the leadership of Chief Cassandra Jones. We have the great program where we're going into the various schools and we're teaching game resistance and how they can make a decent, um, when problems they are confronted with, how they can uh, decide how to make that problem um, easier for them because mm -hmm. a lot of time they just don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. So in the police department we try to really work with the community and mm -hmm. we really have some good community in South Fulton County. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the Citizen uh, Police Academy right. also. And yes, it do go get frustrated from time to time, mm -hmm. but we are dedicated mm -hmm. um, to work hard to help our community. And as your meetings also, mm -hmm. uh, we'll help the police department, the collaboration with everybody working together mm -hmm. and smart justice and the communities being safe mm -hmm. the smart way. Right. 
I think you said something really, really important in terms of the why. You mm -hmm. know, so I think it's important for those folks who do get involved in criminal, criminal activity, is there a reason behind why they did it? And if we can identify that reason, addressing that reason, to me that minimizes the likelihood of that individual or anybody else to go into criminal activity. So I think you pointed out well in terms of mental health, as Mayor Boldy pointed out, education. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a job, um, not, not having a job. So mm -hmm. I think that those are some of the ways that hopefully in the future we can be uh, more smart about dealing with crime and reducing recidivism. So Mayor Boldy, sort of an off the script question based on your, um, your law background. You know, you often find from citizens, you know, is anyone rehabilitated, rehabilit can be re rehabilitated? In other words, is, it, is, is, is everyone in the criminal justice system deserving of a second chance? Do you have this gut in terms of those folks who think they should get a second chance versus somebody else? Well, I, I, a lot of it is to do with their age. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, and, and of course they're starting off younger and younger, you know, mm -hmm. with the juvenile system like it is. Uh, and, and a lot of it uh, may just be as simple as petty thefts or you, you go into someone's home and you take their television. A lot of times you relate that back to, to drug use or, uh, as Captain pointed out, uh, some gang activity or something like that. And a lot of that is off uh, peer pressure, you know, from, from the other uh, young adults that are out there, you know, in the neighborhoods, and a lot of time it's, uh, you know, maybe one of the your own neighbor's kids mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's that's took something like that. But, you know, don't uh, don't give up on these right. uh, kids so quick. Uh, I mean, you know, we we've all made mistakes in our life, and and I think uh, you know at that type of age that they that you can turn them around. Mm -hmm. But but like I say, it's going to take a, as uh, most famously put, it's going to take a village. Right you know, to turn this, turn the tide, so to speak. Right, right. Well, well put. So community policing, you mentioned some of the things that Chief Jones is doing, um, the academy, et cetera. Is there a movement towards more community policing um, in South Fulton? Yes, they are. Um, now we have over 200 and something communities that have what you call neighborhood watch, mm -hmm. where neighbors are coming together to take over their community to make sure it's safe. And most of all, their partnership with the police department, mm -hmm. that partnership is very valuable uh, in the Neighborhood Watch program. But you have where communities have decided that in their neighborhood, their domain, they're going to work hard. Mm -hmm. From time to time, you have neighborhoods that's walk. Um, time to time, you have neighborhoods that do what you call positive lottering where they're just out in their neighborhood looking. And we always tell them to identify the ones that's working at home, mm -hmm. identify the ones that's retired, and just go out to the mailbox during their lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Just look to the left and look to the right. Mm -hmm. But now, like never before, you have more neighborhoods coming together. And our vision is where neighborhoods are connected, where the neighborhood on one particular street, where all of them come together mm -hmm. and talk about what's going on in my neighborhood mm -hmm. to make it a better neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the partnership with the police department, mm -hmm. I tell you, it's very valuable. And they are coming together. Well, that's good to hear. So, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a role that citizens or residents can play. Mm -hmm. The number that you mentioned in terms of 200 plus uh, homeowners associations, is that, is that a growing trend? Um, is there a number or target that you'd like to hit? Well, I would like for every community in South Fulton County to have a neighborhood watch. Mm -hmm. And we have a very good unit that's working toward that. Mm -hmm. um, the number I would like to hit where all the neighborhoods come together as one, mm -hmm. and that's a vision that we have. Mm -hmm. All of them come collective together because what's going on in one neighborhood is going on in another. Right, right. And what's happening now where you have maybe the president will attend a neighborhood mm -hmm. that's next door th to them and vice versa. Well, I think that's a great point because even Mayor Bode pointed out that um, Crime has no boundaries, and right. so 
you know, one community can do well by having an, a, a neighborhood watch program, mm -hmm. but it may not be as, as effective or successful mm -hmm. unless the neighborhood next door um, sets up one as well. Mm -hmm. And there's some sort of communication between the two. Is it a pretty simple process of uh, setting up a uh, neighborhood watch program? It's very simple. Um, all you have to do for the neighborhood watch is call the police department mm -hmm. and we will assist you in setting up the date. Mm -hmm. We get the block captains together, mm -hmm. and the block captains are a very important part of the neighborhood watch. And, you know, some neighborhoods are unique where you just don't have a stretch of 10 houses. Mm -hmm. um, but what I really like, if everyone that come to the community meeting, mm -hmm. if they do not have a block captain, the block captain will take the role as he will take two or three streets mm -hmm. and work hard. And what the block captain does, he reports to the president mm -hmm. uh, what's going on, because the president can't be everywhere at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. When they have three meetings, they get what we call a neighborhood watch sign. But we t always tell them the sign is as good as the people. Right. The neighborhood is the people that's in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that really have to watch. And they continue to have meetings and dialogue with each other and discuss what's going on mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. And we always try to discuss ways of making it better. And we always tell them to know the neighbor on the left, mm -hmm. know their neighbor on the right. And also, most of all, know the neighbor's children, right, what right. kind of car they drive. Right, right. And that's what's happening also. A lot of the neighborhood meetings, I noticed that, uh, their teenagers are attending also, mm -hmm. so they are well, being that's, formed. That's good. And, and even going back to what Mayor Bode said in terms of crime is, is happening with younger and younger people, and so mm -hmm. I think it's good to have um, young people involved in the Neighborhood Watch program. Yes. Anything in, South, in Palmetto in terms of activity of Neighborhood Watches, is that encouraged by your police department as uh, well? Yes, we have uh, several very active communities that do have the Neighborhood Watch program, and of course we do encourage uh, other people to join in, uh, and uh, you know we try to expand you know, on every opportunity we get. But uh, it's just like the uh, mm -hmm. the captain had pointed out, the the biggest thing is knowing your neighbors, and your neighbors knowing you, knowing the kids, knowing what kind of cars are normally there, who's at work, mm -hmm. who's retired, who's at home during the daytime, and uh, you know just that information alone is a world of wealth. Just one other question, uh, Mayor Bode. Again, you've been in law enforcement for twenty plus years. Have you seen any trends over the, that standpoint other than crime is sometimes being um, um, done or committed by younger people? Anything else that you've observed in terms of criminal activity? Well, uh, a, a lot of it is, is now is focused on uh, drug mm -hmm. addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, it could, could be as, as simple as uh, Cocaine or heroin nowadays, and and you know these these kids that get into this, of course they're not working, mm -hmm. and you know they have a, don't have a means to fund those problems. So mm -hmm. that is a lot of basis for these thefts that goes on. You know they're actually, you know, getting out and committing petty thefts and stealing right. stuff. You know, to you know they take swap that for the drugs and stuff. So right, and, and you know, in fact, speaking of crime, uh, drugs, one of the things that the county does uh, and is doing very very well is i focus on what's called accountability courts. And so just this past Friday, went to a drug court graduation where folks, instead of being put, in, put into the jail, were sanctioned going to a, a substance abuse counselor or a center. And the folks who graduated from the program um, have been clean for many, many days and months. And, and so I think that that's something that can be incorporated going forward with a smart justice uh, effort. Mayor, thank you so much. Captain, thank you as well for being here and also sharing your insights, but just as importantly, being engaged and involved in the Smart Justice Advisory Council efforts over the past year. So thank you for being here and thank you for your engagement and thank you for your service. Well, thank Ch you. Chairman, we certainly appreciate your leadership in Fulton County as uh, far as leading us in this direction and we hope it's a great success. It will be due to your help as well. Thank you so much. When we come back, we'll tell you how you can get involved in the conversation and how you can get in touch with the chairman's coroner. We'll be right back.
Thanks for spending time with us today. We want to know what you think about today's topic and what you'd like to hear about on other shows. Here's how you can reach us here in the Chairman's Corner. We're just an email or phone call away. Be sure to connect with us online as well as on Twitter and Facebook. That's all the time we have today. Thanks again for joining us on the Chairman's Corner.